Why don't white people form posses and administer vigilante justice on invader communities that have infiltrated and despoiled their white nations? The answer rests on two fundamental pillars of social organization in late-stage white nations. 1. Whites of Northwest European extraction have been overbred by evolutionary forces into passive, placid house pets who wouldn't survive a day without a paternalistic owner to provide their comforts, and for whom every stranger, no matter how threatening, is a friend deserving tail wags and hand licks. 2. The global homo-captured leaders and the representatives of white nations won't defend whites from rapacious foreign and domestic enemies, and worse, actively punish organic local defenses that nationalistic, self-preserving whites may coordinate in their defense. Pillar number two is overlooked by those disposed to biocultural explanations for civilizational decline. Corn and porn can account for a lot of white passivity in the face of existential demographic threat. But an equally pernicious factor is the collusion of the white ruling class with global homoists, pushing a one-world, race-slurry dystopia that benefits no one but oligarchs in their fortified bunkers deepening their ties with the creep state. The white man's worst enemy are his democratically elected leaders, who sold their souls to the globalist agenda and now control the full might of the state, to crush any local resistance to the forced construction of a mass-market bazaar society greased by enormous waves of third-world migration. White men do not form posies because they're enervated and because they know by now that those leaders in whom they have placed their trust and stewardship would crush absolutely any show of lethal defiance to their state-sanctioned dispossession. It is called posi interruptus, and it isn't so much evidence of the impotence of masculinity as our Gerwald evangelist would have you believe, as it is the growing reality dawning on so many white men that their nations have been occupied by enemies within whose first and last order of business is enforcing the restraining order against white masculinity. You can tell a lot about which rebellious faction an entrenched, decadent enemy fears most by how it apportions its energies and considerable resources. The globalist elite shrug off routine Muslim terrorist attacks and non-white dysfunction while hammering into submission every weapon they have on hand short of hot lead. Any insurgency by white men against the global homo status quo that aims to turn white homelands into Blade Runner-esque nightmare visions. Contra the agitprop of globalist emasculates. The most potent force in the world isn't diversity. It's white men evicted from their own homes, awakened to the traitorous boot on their necks, and hungry for vengeance.